because I was in the back and I was just really overwhelmed because I can't believe he did it for me. Is anyone else with me? What? For me? Am I the only one for me? Doesn't make sense. But I'm overwhelmed and grateful for it. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Yes, he has. Yes, he is. Today we get to celebrate the fact that he didn't stay in that grave. No, it couldn't hold him down. He was victorious. Amen, church. If you guys can get your book out, we're going to go to Luke chapter 24. By the way, Luke is my favorite gospel of the four of them. Luke, Luke, Luke. Luke chapter 24. Matthew, Mark, Luke. Luke chapter 24. If you don't have your Bible, we have it right here for you. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, we were up very early. We were up very early. 10 o'clock service is still a little strange to me, you know. Very early in the morning, the woman took spices they had prepared, went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men, I shared this earlier, two men uh, in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. They were angels. In their fright, the women bowed before them. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Yeah. Oh, someone say remember. Remember. So we're here today. That's why we're here. Remember. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered over to the hand of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. And they remembered his words. Today we're here, and, and I'm so glad to see all of you here today. Today we're here to remember and to celebrate. Someone say celebrate. Because I like, I like the moody stuff. I am a moody person. But today is a day of celebration too. What Jesus did for you and me, for all of humanity. And if it's unclear or if you don't know necessarily what he did, Hebrews chapter 2 puts it so clearly for you and I. He too, this is Jesus he's talking about. He too shared in their humanity. That's us. So that by his death, he might break. Someone say break. break. Today we're going to be set and free in this place, yeah? We're going to be set free in this place. Chains are going to be broken. Bondage is going to be shattered. Set free. He might break the power of him, that's the devil, who holds the power of death. Uh, I'm reading ahead. Nick Miller, read the words on the screen, bro. Do your job. That is the devil. And free those who all their lives, someone say free, free. who were held in slavery by their fear of death. That's what Jesus did. By his death, the enemy would be defeated. And by the resurrection, you and I would be set free. If you could take anything away from today, it's this. is that Christ's death on the cross and resurrection from the grave has set us free. It's simple. Beautiful thing about the word of God and about the good news of the gospel is that you don't need to be all tricky and eloquent. It's really simple. Jesus came to set you free. I need to hear an amen in this church. That's it. Simple. So simple. And every year we get to this place, I get really emotional because I think about everything that I've been through, all that I've gone through to get to this place, and I am overwhelmed I am overwhelmed and in awe of the fact that he would do this for someone like me. Before he gets going on his journey and before he gets to the place where he's about to go to the cross, he reads a, a scroll. He's in church, right? He's in the synagogue and he reads a scroll. And here's the, the, the scripture that he references. Can you put, uh, well, yeah, Jesus reads a prophecy about himself. He pulls out a scroll. He's in the synagogue. He's preaching and teaching about the good news that the kingdom is here and it is coming. And we, he reads a prophecy and we can do the same here today. Can we put this up? Isaiah chapter 61. Isaiah chapter 61. 
So Jesus opens up the scroll and he reads it about himself. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the, the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news. Someone say good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim what? Freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. And then he closes this scroll and the whole town kind of erupts. Who is this man that he would say this about himself? Obviously, in, in the year 2022, we have a, a picture looking back and we can kind of understand the full scope of things. But they were like, nah, -uh, no way. This dude's a carpenter. Nah, -uh. he can't do this. But it's real. And so he's come to proclaim good news, bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. So I have a question for all of us to consider. Who is he talking to? Who's he talking to? I'm going to get emotional, I know it. He's talking to me. Chris, he's talking to you. Pat, he's talking to you, Pat. Yeah. Paige, he's talking to you. Someone say he's talking to me. Wow. Listen to what he said again. I'm just going to put it up here. He said, I've come to bind up the brokenhearted. So what I'm going to do in this section is I'm going to clarify what each person is. And you're going to really see that he is, in fact, talking to you and me. Men, I'm not brokenhearted. I'm strong. Really? <laughs> Let's talk about it then. Can you put this up here? Psalm 34 says it like this. The Lord is close. I'm going to say close. Close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Crushed. I was at this conference and there was an incredible teaching on trauma. Someone say trauma. And we, we all have a story. We all have been through hell and back in one way or another. Whether it was a parent who never encouraged you. Maybe someone did something inappropriately to you. Maybe you simply did not have food on the table for three days. Maybe you had to be perfect or else dad was upset. Can I tell you what trauma is? Trauma is very simple. Trauma is the absence of what is good. Someone say the absence. absence. The absence of what is good or the presence of what is bad. In my past, my heart was broken by things because there was an absence of what is good and a presence of what was bad. I remember being six years old. Sorry, I'm crying. Like, bro, you're a grown man. Stop crying. I remember being six years old and uh, my... I'm just going to be transparent. I'm not really going to hold anything back. We, uh, my family, my, I have a brother. Uh, same mom, different dads. So it's a, it's a joint family here. And it was messy. It was really messy. And in my own home, I did not feel safe when my brother and my dad were around, especially when he was a teenager. It was very volatile. 
lots of fights, physical fights. There was one day where my brother was under the influence, and uh, he got a bat. He got a baseball bat out. I was like seven or eight years old. Everyone's screaming in the house. And I'm like, a, I was always a softie. I really was. I was always like, be nice, everyone. <laughs> you can do it. Just be kind for a minute. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God I'm here. We did not have a lot of good, and there certainly was a lot of bad. Is anyone else with me? Crushed in spirit. I was six or seven years old, and I would go, and my, my safe place where I could cry without being talked to was the shower because it was loud. And so I'd go in the shower, and I would cry because I was afraid of dying. And I didn't know who to talk to because I didn't want to start any fights. I was broken hearted. So when I read Isaiah 61, he's talking to me. Is he talking to you? Look at what Peter says. First Peter says it like this. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree. Someone say the tree. That we might die to sin and live to righteousness. And by his wounds you have been made healed. You understand binding up the broken heart is essentially taking this beautiful creation that has fallen to pieces and putting it back so, so beautifully together. I don't know, I don't know what the art form is, but I believe it's in, what is it babe? Come on. It's Japanese art where if a pot breaks, they get all of the pieces and they put it back together, but they don't glue it together. They line it with gold. He's done that to me. Yeah, he has. He's done it to you. And if you don't know Jesus today, he can do it for you. I'm a living testimony for binding up the broken heart. Listen to what else he says. Free the captives. Someone say, free the captives. I want to give you a clear distinction on what a captive is. Usually, a captive is, is, is someone who, in the midst of war or battle or conquering or takeover, they were not necessarily in the battle. They just might be living there, and they have been taken captive and put into slavery by nothing that they've done simply just by existing in the land when the land when the the army conquered them they were then captives nothing you could have done let me tell you a little bit more anyone ever heard of like generational curses anyone ever heard of that that comes from that comes from a place of just understanding that there's an unavoidable struggle that we have. And usually we model it after those who pass it down to us. My heart breaks for my dad, and I hope you don't mind me telling me the story to me telling this story, but I'm just gonna tell it anyways. I'm like one of those people ask ask for sorry later, you know, ask for forgiveness later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ask for sorry. <laughs> I'm emotional. My father was adopted. His mom wanted nothing to do with him. And if I'm to be transparent, we don't know who the dad was. If you do math, you can figure that out as to why. He doesn't know his father. So who knows what plagued our lineage, what went on in our life. How many people here also know that your father is the most valuable person in your life? It really is. He really is. And fatherless generations are hurting generations. He grew up in a home where his dad would travel a lot, wasn't around. And so here is an identityless man.
trying to sort through growing up and maturing, fell into a life of addiction really young. Started going to meetings. Again, my mom and my dad started a family. He didn't know what he was dealing with. He was just this way. From the very outset of being abandoned, through no fault of his own, he was a captive to things that he could not see or understand. And I'm that person too. <laughs> Until Jesus came in. I was on the exact same course as my father. If you know me today, I have a highly addictive personality. If I start golfing, I'll golf every day. If I like this pizza, I'm going to make everyone else like it too. And I'm going to eat it pretty much every time I can. Video games, don't get me started. Oh, my Lord. Okay, it's just real. I'm just being honest. That's a lineage thing. Addiction is a lineage thing. <laughs> so we've been captives, not even by our own doing. It's just there. Look at what it says in the scriptures. Can you put this up here, please, Mark? This is Romans 5, and it gives clarity. It gives clarity as to why we deal with some of the things we deal with and why, why we're wrestling with this captivity, not even of your own doing. Consequently, just as one trespass resulted in condemnation for all people. Do you know who Paul is talking about right here? He's talking about Adam. From the very beginning, when that dude and his wife, when they partook in eating the fruit, I don't even know if that's a word, but I'm going to say it. Through that one trespass, we all became captives. There's nothing you can do about it. Every single one of us. That's why it says in the scripture, for all have fallen short of the glory of God. It's just true. You're born that way. So we, we deal with this. We're captives, condemned from one trespass in the very beginning. Captives. Someone say captives. And here's the good news. I love when Paul preaches. So also, one righteous act resulted in justification so one death and resurrection from Christ Jesus resulted in the freedom and life someone say for all for all people any captives in this place there's freedom for you for just as through, you can put this up there, come on. For just as through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of, someone say, the one man, the many will be made righteous. You will be made righteous. I've come to proclaim freedom for the captives. First Corinthians puts it so clearly, you can't miss this. For as in Adam all die. And so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Freedom for the captives. My home, my home is different now. My home is not on the trajectory that it was supposed to be on. Why? Because we've been set free. My kid, my kid, it was Thursday night. We had something interesting happen two weeks ago. Just an interesting conversation came up in his life. And we started praying for him. And we started contending for him in spiritual warfare. Literally, like we were like, we were praying for him. Thursday night. We're getting ready for Friday. <laughs> Thursday night, I read to him about the, the burial of Jesus. Emmy shared on this a little bit earlier. But I want to share for you from my personal perspective, and I'm probably going to cry. Okay? He said, Jesus, or he said, Dad, why did Jesus have to die? First of all, the fact that my five-year-old is even asking that question means that our family has been set free. Why did 
he have to, why did he have to die? I said, well, buddy, I know you're sad. He said, I, I said, are you sad? He said, yeah, I'm sad. I, I said, you don't have to be sad. I know it hurt Jesus. I know he went through a lot, but he did it. And he did it joyfully. Do you know why he did it joyfully? He's like, nope. I said, good. <laughs> I'm a pastor. I, I, this is what I'm equipped for, okay? He said, no. I said, he died so that he could set you free, give you life, and be in your heart forever. And then I read to him Hebrews 2. I put it in very five-year-old terms. <laughs> I said, there was a bad guy. His name is the devil. I said, say the devil, like a preacher. Say the devil. He said, the devil. I said, Jesus, when he rose again, he defeated the devil. And now he has no more power over you. Do you know what Warren said? He said, Dad, I feel Jesus fighting the devil all around me all the time. I was like, what? Oh, my gosh. And then he said, and then he said this. Oh, we've been set free, oh, my gosh. Then he said, then he said, he said, I can feel him speaking to me right now. I said, buddy, what's he saying to you? The most simple statement ever. He just said, I love you. I didn't have that. I didn't have that. <sighs> yeah, we have broken. We've, we've broke the chains. Here's the thing. We've been born again, which means that the new creation has come upon us, which means that that old way of living is cast aside and we can actually walk in freedom. I'm no longer a captive to that way of thinking, those patterns of addiction. I'm no longer captive to any of that. And my son is showing or seeing the fruit of that. My son is seeing the fruit of what it looks like to be set free. So I don't look back, <laughs> this is crazy, I don't look back with regret, I look back with joy because I know what it's like to be set free. Any captives in this place? This is what he came to do. Lastly, release prisoners from darkness. Can I give you some insight on a prisoner? Unlike a captive, a prisoner is, is held, put into prison because of their own wrongdoing. Because of decisions, actions, or choices that they've made. You are put in prison when you go and you hurt or assault someone. That was a choice or decision that you made. Sometimes in our ignorance, we do things that kill us on the inside. And what Jesus said is he said, I'm here to release from the darkness. I'm here to proclaim release from darkness for the prisoners. For those who are in this situation because of their own actions. We were ignorant. We did not know. We literally went to so many family counselors. I think we know all of them. Being serious. We tried everything to be healthy. I shared this on Friday night, but, and again, we didn't know. My brother and I shared a room. There was a naked picture of a person on our wall, a poster. We didn't know. I started watching pornography when I was six years old far too early for anyone to witness that. And anyone who tells you otherwise is not operating in wisdom. And I didn't know it, but I was turning to this computer screen, this sexual immorality over and over and over because the enemy has a promise. He tries to give you a promise saying, it's going to make you feel good and fill those empty voids inside of you. And then when it's over, the high drops down and then he shames you and says, you're a fool. 
but it was the only thing, it was the only thing that I felt gave me life. And so to be honest, maybe some of us are in this place too. I was okay with being a prisoner. I was okay with these chains. I didn't know any better. Imagine being born in darkness and thrown in a jail and you don't know any better and so hey this computer screen feels all right the end of this bottle makes me feel okay throwing my body around feels all right taking money from this person and this person and this person feels good at least I got some food to eat and in our own doing we become prisoners Jesus said, I'm here to set you free. But let me give some preface, though. He didn't set you free so that you can go back to. He set you free so that you can go towards something. He doesn't deliver you from. He delivers you to. I'm going to say that again. He doesn't deliver you from. He delivers you to. So Jesus said, this is such a cool story. He gives us insight as to what a prisoner is. Jesus said to the Jews, and these are people who had followed the law and done everything perfectly. Yes, yes, yes. Who had believed in him. If you abide in my word, Jesus says, you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth. And some will say, the truth will set you free. Isn't that interesting that the world is trying to find truth more than ever right now? There's a lot of seeking for truth because there's a lot of prisoners in bondage. They answered him, wait a second, we're offspring of Abraham, and we've never been enslaved to anyone. Look at the insight here. How is it, how is it that you say you will become free, these Jews asked him. Jesus answered them, truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices, someone say practices. Whoever practices sin is a slave to sin. Does anyone live a perfect life here? No. So we're all, we've all been in this place. Look at what it says in Romans 6. This is the hope that we have. We know that our old self, someone say old self, was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. So when he read Isaiah 61 and said, I'm going to bind the brokenhearted, set free the captives, and release from prison the prisoners, when he said that, he did it on the cross. So today is a great day to celebrate that and a great day to find life. Jesus said that he also, in that same Isaiah scripture, he said, I've come to proclaim the good news. Someone say good news. What is, what is the good news, church? Yeah, we've been set free. What is the good news? What is the good news? If you're the brokenhearted, if you're the captive, or you're the prisoner, can I tell you what the good news is? Romans 10, 13 says it like this. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Everyone. Because if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Someone say, I will be saved. I will be saved. He put his money where his mouth is. He did it. So are you brokenhearted? Are you a captive? Or are you a prisoner? I'm pretty sure those three categories strike every person in this room. Now, the good news is, is that there is freedom for all who believe in Him. Now you have a choice to go to Him with your chains and say, chains and say, I'm ready. 
Here's a good question. Nick, why would he do this? <laughs> why would he set a murderer free? Isn't that an interesting? That seems like a logical question. Why would he set someone free like me? He knows my past. He knows what I've been through. He saw what happened in this house. He saw the computer screen that I was looking at for 12 years. Why would he do that? Why would he set the captives free, release prisoners, and bind up the broken? Why would he do that? Romans 5 says it like this. Please take notes. Please, please, please. But God showed his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For God so loved the world, you can put this up here, that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Why would he do that? He doesn't even just want to set you free. Do you know he wants to express his immeasurable love towards you? He was willing to conquer the grave so that you could walk out. And he did this out of immeasurable love for you and for me. He did this out of immeasurable love for your future generations. He did it out of immeasurable love, get this, even for those who would not embrace him. Even for those who would continue to spit in his face. Even that soldier who pierced his lungs. Even him. He did it for. Even those that put the crown of thorns on his head. Even that man that beat his back. That's who he did it for. Out of love. Someone say out of love. I want to share this scripture again. Why Jesus did what he did and what power it has. He too shared in our humanity. He had to come in the flesh so that the debt of our sin could be paid. Paid in full. Done forever and ever. He spilled his blood as the atonement for our sins. In other words, you're clear and you're good to go. He might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. Jesus, he broke the power of the enemy. The grave is no longer your eternal prison, church. Is everyone with me? I know that this is a heavy one. I can feel it in the room. The grave is no longer your eternal prison. So when I was sitting there as a six-year-old crying in my shower, I thought it was over. And it's not. It's not. There was a debt to be paid from the very beginning. And through the righteous act of one man, all has been set right. Can we bow our heads? Believers right now are praying for those who are lost. I'm not just saying those words. Seriously, believers, you need to be praying for those who might be sitting next to you who do not know the way, the truth, and the life. This is the most important moment of their life. When you close the eyes at the end of the day, those who are bind or those who are brokenhearted, those who are captives, those who are prisoners, if your life were to end, I got to tell you the hard truth. You will not be with him in paradise or in heaven simply through faith in Jesus so that no man may boast. You can receive eternal life and be set free from that grave prison. And Jesus was talking right to you, the brokenhearted, the captive, and the prisoner. So when he died and he rose again, he paid the debt. The enemy has been defeated, and you can walk free. All you simply have to do, you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have a lot of money. You don't have to be the smartest person in the world. It doesn't matter where you're at, what you've been through. All you simply have to do is believe. Someone say, believe that he is Lord and that he died and rose again. So my question to you, who have not embraced Jesus yet and have not given your life to him, what happens when you breathe your final breath? But not only that, do you want to be free today? If that's you and you want to invite Jesus into your life, on the count of three, I just want to encourage you to do something bold. And it's not in the raising of your hand that you're set free. 
but it's in acknowledging him as Lord and Savior and believing in your heart. All I'm going to ask you to do is raise your hand on the count of three as an outward way of saying, Nick, I believe it in my heart and I give him my life today. Today I am set free. If that's you, go ahead and raise your hand on the count of three. One. Two. This is the best decision you'll ever make. Three. Does anyone, I see that hand, I see that hand, I see that hand, I see that hand. Does anyone else want to make that decision? I see those hands, I see those hands, that's amazing. Does anyone else want to be set free today? Does anyone else need their Savior today? Yes. Anyone else? Anyone else? Wow. Yeah, you can put your hands down. <laughs> if you raised your hands, just say this in your heart. Jesus, I believe that you died and rose again to set me free. I turn away from that grave prison life. I repent of my past and I walk with you into the life that you have for me. The life, the life, and more life. Jesus, I'm excited for the eternal call that you have in my life that I'm going to be with you forevermore. You are my Lord and Savior. Have my all. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Lift up a shout of praise for those who made a decision in this place. Yes. Yeah. Freedom, huh? Oh, I've been set free. I've binded up. I've been set free and released. So I didn't want to end there. I have a little bit more to go. What do we do now that we've been set free? First of all, if you raise your hand, there's some ama amazing people. Prayer team, where are you at? Can you raise your hand real quick? we got a prayer team over here, prayer team over here that would love to pray with you after service and connect with you, okay? But what do you do now, now that you've been set free, now that you've given your life to Jesus? And i got to tell you, church, I see this happening too much. So often we go back to the grave that we've been rescued from, and we got to stop it. You don't go back into that grave. You've been set free. It is for freedom. Put this up there. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm. Someone say, stay go. Stay go. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. You've been free. It's done. Don't let it be a burden again. Look at this. Jesus says in John chapter 8, so if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Those chains aren't just like kind of loose. They're gone. They're gone. It's over. Since then, you've been raised with Christ. This is Colossians 3. Since you've been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. In other words, don't keep going back to that grave. Don't go back to that website that tries making you feel good. No, no, no. Those chains are gone. Truly, you are free. For you died. And your life is now hidden with Christ and God. Keeps going. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death. Someone say put to death. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. In other words, get rid of those chains. Don't put them on your mantle and be like, oh, you know, someday I'll put them back on. No. Get them out. Pick up the mat and go. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. Sexual immorality. He says that first for a reason. Because it's real. Impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived. But now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these. Anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other since you've taken off. Someone say, my old self. I've taken off my old self and I've put on the new self. Put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge. Renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Someone say, don't go back. You've been set free. Get rid of those chains. It's time. Second thing I want to say is this. Get as many people out of the grave as you possibly can. It's enough. Those loved ones, have the conversations. Get them here. It's urgent. We aren't guaranteed tomorrow. Amen, church? 
We're not guaranteed tomorrow. And I don't want to walk another day with seeing those whom I love, whom I care for, captive. I don't want to go another day. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But don't use your freedom to indulge the flesh. In other words, serving yourself. Don't do that. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. The greatest thing that you can do to serve someone is cast aside your dignity. Get them saved. That's the greatest thing that you can do to serve. Have the conversations. Be prepared to give the reason for the hope that you have found in Christ Jesus. Go share the gospel. Preach the gospel. That's how you can serve. That's your greatest service. Live as free people, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as God's slaves. And let me tell you something. The Word also says that when you live as God's slaves, it doesn't lead to captivity and, and terrible things. It leads to holiness and a life that is incredible. He's the only master that elevates his slaves and treats them so beautifully. Look at what Jesus says to you and to me. He said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. I might not be at your lunch table or your dinner table today. It was a shiny ball. That was really funny. I'm not going to be at your dinner table today. I get distracted. Squirrel type stuff. You know what I mean? I'm not going to be at your dinner table, but do you know who is going to be at your dinner table? You. You. Have the conversation. Pray. Step out. Walk in faith. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not will be condemned. If you don't know this, just call me up. I'll answer any phone call at 2 a.m., promise you. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. We just did a whole series on that. Come on, church. Hey. They will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people, and they will get well. And the Lord had spoken to them. After he had done this, he was taken up into heaven and sat at the right hand of God. And then the disciples went out, and instead of using their freedom for themselves, they went and preached everywhere they went. And the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word by the signs that accompanied it. So don't go back in and get as many people out. Someone say, don't go back in. Get them all out. Say it like he answered, get them all out, get them out, get them out, get them out of here. He answers. Can we lift up a shout of praise for Jesus in this place? Bind up the brokenhearted. Set free the captives and release from darkness those who are in prison. Christ's death on the cross and resurrection from the grave has set us free. Amen, church? Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for what you did thousands of years ago. God, we thank you and we glorify you. And today we praise you and we celebrate you for all that you have done. Thank you that you went and did the craziest thing in the world and allowed your body to be beaten and bruised and actually give up your life for someone who was broken, captive, and a prisoner like me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you set all free all those who would believe and Jesus I pray that we would walk with freedom that we would turn away from the old grave and we would get as many people out in this free life that we live in Jesus name everybody said amen lift up a shout of praise in this place